Hi everyone, thank you for joining us with the next talk. I'm excited to present the next speaker. Uh, his name is Christian Rover. He's a research associate in the Department of Medical Statistics at the University Medical Center of Göttingen in Germany. He's currently uh, uh, research focuses on Bayesian methods for meta-analysis and their implementation in R. So he will be presenting today Bayesian random effects meta-analysis using Bayes meta. Okay, yeah, thanks for the kind introduction. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the Bayesian meta package for Bayesian random effects meta analysis, and I'll first, yeah, briefly introduce the problem and then how it's uh, implemented in R and how you can use the Bayesian meta package, and then close with some, yeah, outlook and, and also some, some, yeah, future plans. So the uh, problem, first of all, is, I mean, the, the, the generic meta-analysis problem. Suppose you have a number of uh, studies that you uh, found in a systematic review. So in this example uh, uh, case here, six studies, and these six studies are quoting uh, an estimate of some number. In this case, it's an estimated log odds ratio, and along with the estimates, so indicated by the red dots here, uh, along with the estimates, we also have um, standard errors, indicated by the by the lines, by the horizontal intervals here, the, the whiskers. And yeah, what we want to do in the end, we want to somehow combine these numbers and want to figure out a, a combined estimate that we, that's shown at the, at the bottom here. And uh, yeah, so that's what we, we're going for and what we need to uh, consider uh, in addition is also this, this nuisance parameter, this, this uh, between trial heterogeneity, which you don't see in the picture here, but you only see it uh, quoted in the bottom left here. Yeah, and we'll see how that how that looks in, in practice in the following picture. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, common random effects model uh, used uh, or often applied in meta-analysis and how it works is, I mean, you, you can see in the, in the, the first line here. So uh, we have our estimates yi, we have the standard errors sigma i, that's the data that's going into the analysis and we're assuming that um, the yi are measurements of some parameter theta i. So for the i-th study, the i-th uh, uh, quoted measurement that we have. And uh, of course, this is a noisy measurement of the underlying true value and the amount it's, uh, or the, the amount of offset from the true value is given by the standard, uh, was quantified by the standard deviation here, by the, by the standard error, sorry, by the sigma parameter. And then for all the different studies that we have included in our uh, meta-analysis, these theta i parameters, these true parameters that are measured by each single estimate are not necessarily uh, completely identical. They are only similar. And so these have, have again, a normal distribution centered around some uh, overall mean parameter mu. Uh, and it's, they, they have this extra uh, variance prime or this extra variance or variability given by tau squared here. You can also, if you want, write it down in a single, you, you, so that technically that means integrating out these theta i parameters, you can write it in a single line here in the second line. And you can see that, or you can also think of the, the model as your estimates being a noisy measurement of the mu parameter, the overall mean, and the amount of offset that you're getting in your, in your actual data, in your empirical data, um, is determined by, first of all, the measurement error, the standard error that you have in your measurement, the, the measurement noise or the measurement uncertainty. And on top of that, you've got this extra variance given by the heterogeneity. So mu and tau are the two parameters in the model. Uh, mu is the one that's usually of primary interest and tau is yeah mostly a nuisance parameter. And if you want, I mean, we'll see that later. Sometimes you also need to worry about these theta i parameters. Yeah, so these, this normal, also, also so-called normal, normal hierarchical model uh, is quite commonly used. It's uh, useful for many endpoints, uh, anything essentially what you can, that you can measure and, and where you can quote uh, a standard error along with it. So in the example, we had log odds, logarithmic odds ratios. You can also use it for hazard ratios, mean differences, all sorts of numbers. Uh, in the following, we will follow the Bayesian approach for inference, which means that we also need to worry about Price specification, which is yeah required, but it's it's not not uh, uh, terribly complicated in this case. Um, on the computational side, it's usually uh, 
slightly more involved than what you may be uh, used to from from frequentist methods so and usually it involves a lot of integration which you can uh, often approach using monte carlo methods um, but in this oh, in, in this particular case oopsie sorry um we'll be sorry uh, we'll be using uh, numer numerical computation so it's yeah all numerical integration so once back to the to the very first slide i mean we saw this overall estimate at the bottom of the plot here shown in red as the red diamond and of course where does it come from it comes from you know in the if it's a bayesian estimation uh, it comes from you know some posterior distribution of this log odds ratio and in order to figure out say the median and the 95 percent credible interval you need to integrate and you can see this is the marginal distribution marginalizing over the heterogeneity already so this is again another integral and this all this integration that's essentially the computations that you need to do and that's what the what the package will do for you yeah so the base meta package in brief it it does bayesian meta analyses it uh, gives you it does all the integration for you it provides access to all the integrals that you may be interested in it to some extent builds upon the metaphor and force plot packages for you know pre-processing the data and nicely illustrating the data at the end. Um, what's pretty common is, you know, you perform the analysis and you get returned some object, which is essentially a list object. And yeah, so that's the same, I guess, for linear models, the LM function or something, you apply the LM function and you get back some list object. And in the list object, you've got a lot of, you know, the data itself, the estimates and so on. Um, and it's similar here. And what's not quite so common is that a number of these list elements are also functions that you can use and which, you know, give you the, the uh, access to the integrals in the end. So we'll uh, walk through it a little bit uh, using an, an example here. So we'll be looking at this pediatric transplantation data set. Um, and it includes uh, six studies that were uh, uh, giving log odds ratios along with their standard errors. Uh, it was looking at, uh, in the example, they were looking at um, acute reaction rejections, rejection reactions, sorry. Um, so it was about pediatric transplantation. The acute rejections are the events that you want to uh, avoid, that you want to prevent. And so, you know, if you take the medication, you want to have low odds, reduced odds of acute rejections. And so you're looking for small log odds ratios here. So that's what you would like to have if you take the medication. Um, yeah, for the analysis itself, we can use, I mean, for this uh, run here, we can use an, a, an uninformative or and improper uniform prior for the effect mu, so for the overall log odds ratio. And that's also the, the default specification if you, if you don't specify anything. And for the heterogeneity, you may need to spend a little more thought. Um, and for the present analysis, we'll be uh, using a half normal prior with scale parameter 0.5. You can, you know, why a half normal prior with scale 0.5? That's, I guess, a uh, topic of, of another presentation in itself. And we'll, yeah, I, I just refer to the, to the reference here. So to the actual example, uh, to run the analysis, we first yeah, load the package, load the example data set. Um, then we need to, I mean, the example data set contains the plain counts, the plain two by two tables for each single uh, study. And we need to uh, derive the log odds ratios and their standard errors. So that's done using this ESCalc function from the metaphor package. And the point where it's getting interesting is, is at the bottom here. So that's where we're applying the base meta function and we can see from the call here that, so we're calling the base meta function, we're uh, assigning the results to this BMA object or the object that we call BMA. Um, and all we need to provide is a, an, um, an argument Y for the estimate and an argument Sigma for the standard errors. And also the, this tau prior argument for the prior specification. So that's the prior for the heterogeneity. And you can see that, you know, what we need to specify here is the prior density. So that means, I mean, it looks a bit clumsy here in, in this uh, function call, but on the other hand, that means that we are extremely flexible here. So any uh, prior density that you can write down or that you can implement, you can plug in here and use it for the analysis. 
Yeah, and we don't, I mean, in fact, we don't need to specify Y and Sigma explicitly here. We can also just provide the uh, ES object that we defined at the top here uh, to the base meta function. Yeah, so when we just print out the uh, BMA object, the, the object that we called BMA here, you can see you get the usual output, you get a little bit of summary, you get the uh, estimates, um, the, the input data and so on. And that's probably sufficient for some applications already. Um, but the yeah, interesting bits is, you know, when you try to uh, access the individual list elements of this uh, base meta object, of the returned object here. Um, so, for example, I mean, as I said, it, it's a list object and you can uh, access the individual slots in that list. So, for example, you've got a summary element that's pretty common. It gives you the summary estimates for the parameters in the model. So, for the heterogeneity and for the overall mean estimate, the posterior mean, median, and 95% uh, credible interval, and so on. Um, but then you also have these, these other slots that contain functions. So, for example, you've got this D posterior and P posterior and Q posterior for the posterior density, posterior cumulative distribution function, posterior quantile function, or a function for to compute credible intervals, and so on. And you can uh, yeah just access these functions and get out numbers that you may be interested in, you know, beyond the plain summary statistics that you're given already. And we can look at an example here. So for example, say you want to want to have a plot of the posterior density here for the effect parameter. What you need to do is you just specify a vector X ranging from minus three to 0.5. And then you just plot X versus the D posterior function here applied to X. And you can just, yeah, pull this from this BMA object, from the returned object from the base meta function that we called BMA in this case here. And so you've got this, yeah, plot of the posterior density. I mean, it looks pretty much like a normal di distribution here, with, but it's not, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, somewhat close to a normal distribution, but it can also be skewed and look pretty non-normal as well. And we can also, you know, access the other functions and uh, figure out, for example, the posterior median here, the 0.5 quantile, or an interval, and, and add that to the plot as well, or use it for whatever purposes as well. Yeah, we can also draw, say, a forest plot to summarize the, the output, and we see, I mean, that's pretty similar to what we saw on one of the first slides already. Um, what we see here, in addition, in addition and by default, is these little gray lines here and also the, the bar at the bottom here. So we can see uh, we have, in addition, this, this prediction, a prediction and a prediction interval, most interestingly. And we also see this shrinkage estimates. So that's an individual extra additional estimate for each single study here. And that's the, the estimate of the study-specific theta i parameter. So the study-specific mean that is measured by that particular study. And yeah, that's quite useful for, for some applications or for some um, non-standard or, or advanced applications. So if we, you know, just recall the original model that we were using. So we said that, you know, each single measurement, each single estimate here was measuring some theta i parameter here. And these theta i parameters are the ones that are normally distributed with uh, variance according to the heterogeneity around the true mean. Then we can, you know, we can use the prediction or we can derive a prediction of a new or say a future study mean, which may be useful, for example, if you're interested in uh, study design, say you want to know, you know, you have done six studies in the past, you want to plan a seventh study and uh, you want to know what sorts of uh, effects or also what sorts of placebo rates and so on to expect, then you can use meta-analysis, derive a prediction and use that for study design. And also these, Shrinkage estimates are often of interest. Um, so uh, again, you can, you know, in, in our case, we had six studies in there. So we have six different theta i parameters. And for each of these, we can again, access posterior densities, quantiles, and so on. Uh, again, using the same functions as before, we just need to specify the, the extra prediction parameter or individual parameter here for the individual estimates. And that's useful for, uh, say, if you want to use uh, a meta-analysis to derive a prior for the analysis of a future study. And so there's some, some advanced uh, kinds of analyses that you can 
do using these approaches here. Yeah, so maybe quite briefly some, some other uh, features that are included uh, in the package and in the functionality. So we are, uh, for the overall effect, we can also specify prior distributions. So, and that works via an additional argument here, the mu.prior argument that you spy, uh, specify in the function call. And that's, yeah, that, that's restricted to normal priors. So normal distributions for, for the prior distributions or prior information on the overall uh, odds ratio. Uh, we have, we are quite flexible uh, with the uh, heter with the prior distributions for the heterogeneity. So we can yeah, specify, specify all sorts of uh, functions for the tau prior. We can also specify um, additional arguments here. So we can also ask for say a uniform prior an improper prior or the uh, uh, Jeffrey's prior and so on. So you're, you're, you're quite flexible here. Um, in addition to the, to the output that we've seen already, you can also um, ask for base factors to be returned. So for example, I mean, it would be uh, maybe of interest to, you know, see the base factor for uh, a zero heterogeneity or a base factor for a zero effect. Um, yeah, if you're interested in p values, which you of course don't quite get from a Bayesian analysis, you can uh, compute posterior predictive p values. And for that, you have this PPP value function here. So that's, uh, yeah, quite, I mean, it's a bit numerically demanding because it's using again Monte Carlo integration. But yeah, you, you can figure out these posterior predictive p values as well for a number of different uh, um, hypotheses that you can specify. Um, yeah, quite often it's common or it's useful to uh, quantify the influence that the individual estimates have on the overall outcome in the end and do that by quant uh, yeah, yeah, giving weights to, yeah, to quantify the, the contribution of individual studies. So that's included in the output as well. Um, you can produce additional plots like funnel plots or trace plots showing the uh, behavior of the conditional mean and standard deviation of the individual studies as you're varying the heterogeneity. Um, and there's yeah some additional functions that's, that's again a bit advanced. So that's useful for figuring out uh, sensible prior uh, prior distributions for the effect or for the heterogeneity for that you can figure out these unit information standard deviations and also effective sample sizes that's useful when you're uh, performing a meta-analysis in order to use it as the prior in a future meta-analysis and then you can quantify its weight or its contribution in terms of an effective sample size here yeah so to summarize um, yeah, Bayesian meta-analysis or Bayesian, Bayesian methods are useful for many meta-analysis applications. I mean, especially if you're looking at few studies where other methods tend to behave funny some, sometimes. And also if you're looking at applications where you, where you want to, you know, use prior information in the analysis or you want to do the analysis in order to formulate prior, a, a prior distribution for some other analysis. Um, with a base meta package, you get quick and nicely reproducible computations, which, you know, makes it very easy as, or maybe easier as compared to MCMC methods. And you can do quick sensitivity checks. You can run easily simulations with that. You get detailed output with all the, you know, uh, details of the analysis. You can uh, access all the integrals that you may be interested in, hopefully. Um, yeah, you got the access to prediction and shrinkage intervals and so on. You can figure out margin likelihoods even. So that's that may be useful for things like uh, base factors and then uh, model selection or model averaging applications as well. And yeah, currently we are thinking about extending or whether it's possible to extend the same methods for meta regression as well, which would be quite interesting and hopefully useful. Yeah, so finally I have some references. Thank you so much, uh, Christian. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, so we, uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions now, but please feel free to post them on the chat or reach out to the speaker. 
And now we have a short break coming up and we will be back at 345. In the meantime, uh, a special chat is open, so you can follow the green button at the bottom of the screen during the break and chat with others. And we will see you back uh, after the break. Again, uh, we'll see you back at 345. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Bye.